Welcome back to Frontline News. I'm Cody Ann Byatt. It's now time for Frontline Business. According to local insurance data, more Jamaicans are purchasing critical illness policies. The Insurance Association of Jamaica says in 2017, 25% of the 101,617 new policies sold were critical illness policies as persons protected themselves against the increase in non-communicable diseases. The life insurance industry paid out $21 billion in individual life benefits, of which $12.7 billion comprised death benefits, while $649.4 million was paid out for critical illness claims. According to the IAJ, the industry also paid out $18 billion in medical claims in 2017, a third of which represented payments for prescription drugs. President of the Jamaica Employers Federation, Jeff David Wan, is optimistic about Jamaica's job growth prospects. He says the island is yet to unlock the full potential of the business process outsourcing industry. I think it is sustainable because the BPO sector, I think we barely scratch the surface. The Philippines has a million BPO workers. We have about 40,000. And there is some degree of migration because we're closer to the U.S., we speak English. So I think that's going to continue for a while. I think the tourism is also going to continue because the American economy is still strengthening. And that's 70% of the tourists. The stronger the economy is in America, the more tourists we get. Simple as that. Windalco's parent company, Russian aluminum giant Rusal, has appointed a new chief executive officer after reporting a 42% increase in third quarter recurring net profit on the previous quarter as sanctions imposed by Washington were postponed on Monday. Rusal name Evgeny Nikitin, who has been acting chief executive officer since May as CEO. Mr. Nikitin previously headed Rusal's aluminum division. The U.S. Treasury Department in April blacklisted billionaire Oleg Depreska and eight companies in which he is a large shareholder, including Russell, citing malign activities by Russia. The sanctions have been postponed several times as the United States considers excluding Russell from the U.S. blacklist if Deripaska drops his control over the company. The deadline was last extended to December 12. The foreign exchange market closed on Tuesday, with the U.S. dollar being sold for $127.60, the Canadian for $95.99, the pound sterling for $166.63, and the euro selling for an average of $146.14. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSC combined index declined by 2,554 points to close at over 300,000. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 55 stocks, of which 16 advanced, 28 declined, and 11 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 3 points to close at 3,242. Stocks advanced for Cargo Handlers, Epley Limited, Fosrich Company, JMMB Group, and Kingston Wharves. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments, AMG Packaging and Paper, Berger Paints, Caribbean Cement, and Caribbean Producers. Trading firm were CAC 2000, Consolidated Bakeries, Dolphin Cove, Express Catering, and General Accident Insurance. Victoria Mutual Investments was the volume leader, with over 1 million units, followed by Wasinko Group also with over 1 million units, and Fosswich Company with 185,773 units. And in news in oil, oil prices fell on Tuesday, with U.S. crude futures sliding to an eight-month low, a day after Washington granted sanction waivers to top buyers of Iranian oil, and as Iran said it had so far been able to sell as much oil as it needs to sell. Brand crude futures fell $1.04 to settle at $72.13 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures fell 89 cents to settle at $62.21 a barrel. And that's it for Frontline Business. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Pleasant viewing.